It's Thanksgiving morning. Happy Thanksgiving. We've got the fire going because it's cold. It's windy. So you can see it looks a little tore up back there. Guess what that means? Our power's off. So we're gonna go let the guineas out. We've already taken out two of our chickens. It's uh, <laughs> we're not gonna lose any more chickens because the guineas. So we're gonna let them roam the property and just really hope for the best. <laughs> They're not really meant to be confined apparently, is what we're learning. We're all done losing our chicks. I love the guineas, but I don't love losing my chickens. Renee and I work way too hard <laughs> to let anything take out our chickens. Um, the guineas, we're just hopeful that they're just gonna stick around the property and do what guineas do, which is kind of eat snakes, eat fleas, uh, bugs, you know, alert us for any crazy activity. Um, they're pretty vocal on everything. Here you go. Food out here too. So, don't know if you guys know this, but uh, we have two more cats in here. <laughs> Haven't named them yet. And we were hoping to be to have females, but they're both male. But they seem pretty nice. And again, it's a brindle and a black one. Just like our other two. See, we got one there. And tiger is around. These two are itching to come out. Aren't you guys? Here. Not yet. I want you guys to realize that this is home. Maybe one or two more weeks in here, okay guys? Guineas still want to go inside the coop. I put some scratch out here. And they were pecking a bit. They're starting to relax a little. And of course, Wilbur heard all the ruckus and made his way down. Now he's going to start eating all the scratch. I hope we're doing the right thing. They're, they're meant to be free. And we've lost two chickens, and I think it's because of them. I'm seeing them very aggressive with the chickens. Very aggressive. Today, I am mixing our pig feed. So I've got quite the system going here. I'm gonna fill those buckets. I have them on the other side of the fence because the goats won't leave me alone because they love all this stuff. When we started with these pigs, we had a heck of a time trying to find the right feed for them. Um, we, we've gone back and forth. We used to get this feed mix, this grain mix from uh, the local feed store. It wasn't working out. Um, so after some research, I went ahead and just started mixing my own. So 
this is the mix that I came up with. I've got three 50 pound bags of dry cob, one 50 pound bag of red flaky wheat bran, one 50 pound bag of steam rolled oats. No, no, I'm sorry, steam rolled barley. soybean meal. The big question when you're feeding your animals, especially pigs, you're raising them for meat, what's the protein content? What's the percentage of protein that you're giving them? So I've got my formula here and if I'm wrong, of course, please comment. This is the way that I've, I've figured it out. I don't like to do anything with scales. I, I don't want to have a scale and a bucket and put some a little here, a little there. I like to mix a mass quantity that's going to last me a couple of weeks um, so that I don't have to worry about it until, you know, two, three weeks from now. You take the amount of protein, the percentage of protein, and you multiply that by, by the amount of pounds, right? And so, for example, let's take this red flaky wheat bran. The wheat bran has 15% protein in a 50 pound bag. If you take 15% protein times 50 pounds and you get 750 right same with the uh, rolled barley that has nine percent nine times 50 pounds you get 450 we've got the dry cob dry cob has 10 percent protein 10 percent times 50 gives you 500 we have three of those then you've got the soybean which is 46.6 percent protein and multiply that by 50 pounds, you get 2,330, right? You add all that up and let's get the calculator here. 2,330 plus, let's see, the 750 for the wheat bran, 450 for the steam rolled barley, 500 for the dry cob times three, and we get 5,030, right? Then how many pounds in total we've got one, two, three hundred pounds. So 5,030, multiply that, I mean, I'm sorry, divide it by 300 pounds. That gives me 16.76% protein. That's exactly what I want. Anything above 16. You can also give this to your chickens, but our chickens don't like it. We've tried it, they just don't like it. So. That is the mix for the pigs. So what we do is I mix it, put it in a big barrel, and we take three scoops of that, three, three scoops of this filled, and put it in a five gallon bucket with a um, five gallon bucket maybe filled halfway with water. We also put like a half scoop of uh, alfalfa bermuda pellets and then we put some uh, diatomaceous earth food grade just for dewarming uh, and some uh, mineral salt in there just a tad bit and that's what we do we give them we've got four pigs we give them two buckets every feeding morning and night so let's get started
Charlie, it's not for you. Cool thing about it. That mix fills this barrel to the top. So that's the pig feed. Of course, if you have a dog, they're gonna enjoy some of it. Four buckets here, two and two, of the covered. We prep those every time we feed. We feed them two in the morning, two in the evening. Fill them half full with water. Three scoops of this. Add some uh, alfalfa Bermuda pellets and some uh, mineral salt and some diatomaceous earth. You've got yourself a balanced meal for the pigs. Right, babe? It's Thanksgiving morning. Happy Thanksgiving. We've got the fire going because it's cold. It's windy. So you can see it looks a little tore up back there. It's windy. Guess what that means? Our power's on. It's windy. So sorry for the wind noise. Yeah, take this guy off. I put the small generator on. I have it wired in. Again, this is not code compliant, but it works. There's nothing dangerous about it. This gives me 3,500 running watts. So, it's enough to power the refrigerator in the garage, the freezer in the garage, refrigerator inside the house, the upstairs modem, for uh, Wi-Fi because without that we're dead in water as far as any communication um, we don't get any service out here so we rely on the Wi-Fi in order for uh, for us to be able to call out text out and that's all that's running oh and then some plugs for the the coffee maker that's it so that should be enough that's all we need in the house I'm gonna take this big guy which is about 7,500 running watts or 7,250 sorry I'm gonna take this guy down to the well and see if I can run the well off of it I should be able to it's a three horsepower well um, and I shouldn't need more than I think it's like 6,000 watts normally what I do is I put this big guy onto the house and that can run basically the entire house um, and then uh, we just fill water buckets up from our uh, reserves there. Take it to the back, make sure the animals get theirs. But I'm going to do something a little different this time. But it requires me to have to go down there, wire up the breaker. <sighs> so we'll see. I still haven't even been able to get to the wood. It's frustrating. You can never get anything done. The, uh, the thing I had planned today was uh, I was going to smoke a ham, which I still may do, although it might not be a good idea because of the wind. But uh, that and you saw earlier, we were trying to get the guineas out. We we're kicking the guineas out of the coop because we have had two dead chickens, two dead hens that we've that we've uh, come across on different occasions and we know that the guineas are pretty mean to them so we kicked them out that one day it was pretty much a struggle to get them out but we got them out thinking that they would adapt and they would love the freedom but they did not they just kept circling the, the, the coop run wanting to get in and then that night when we uh you know when we slept they jumped on top of the coop run and slept up on the roof here but Every little noise, I, I, I think I came running out here with my gun maybe three times that night. Um, any little noise we heard, we popped up, so we didn't get much sleep. So the next day, my 
my conscience was not uh, letting me rest and, and you know we have a responsibility to these animals and for us to just leave them out like that um, leave them out vulnerable just wasn't sitting well with me so we put them back in and I was going to make them a little uh, a little run extension here on this side so I was going to extend it here just a little square with a gate a door latch and have them in there and then during the day just open the door and let them run free and um, open that they would come back in at night to roost and then I can close them up and then they would they'd be safe that's what I had planned today but uh, we'll see what we can get done all right Jody let's go help Renee water back and forth so it's thanksgiving day and we're not having thanksgiving here at the, at the farm we're uh, going to my mom but if you guys notice we still have our uh, our two turkeys thanksgiving and christmas I just didn't feel they were big enough yet it's friday morning day after thanksgiving and Still no power. They shut it off Thanksgiving morning at 1.30 a.m. It was off all day yesterday, all morning, all day, all night. Wind actually died about yesterday afternoon, I'll say maybe 2 or 3 p.m. No, they didn't turn it on. We are now Friday morning, the day after Thanksgiving. It's about 10, 10.30 in the morning. Power's still off. We're now over 34 hours unbelievable 
unbelievable.